On today's show, we recap last week's Decade Pep Rally. We also get a recap of football and Coach Wilkinson's first ever win at the 6A level from this past Friday. And finally, we look into Coach Peoples' recent promotion and what he's doing with the aquatics program. These stories and more on this edition of Hilltop News. What's rockin' Rock Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Hilltop News. Live from Studio 1060, I'm Veronica Volchak. And I'm Kyle Lewis. I hope you all enjoyed your four-day weekends as much as we did. Here at Hilltop News, we are making sure to wear maroon to show our support for the students of Uvalde as they return to school. That's right, Kyla. I know I'll be rocking my maroon all day long to show support. We have a great show in store for y'all today, but first, Kyla's going to catch you up on everything going on around the hill. Kyla? Thank you, Veronica. Today is the last day to withdraw from any dual credit courses without receiving a penalty. If you plan to drop out after today, it will be seen as a withdrawal on your call-in admission. If you would like to drop out, you can reach out to Ms. Schultz through your call-in email. Homecoming court voting starts today. All 9th through 11th graders are able to vote for nominees in their respected grade levels. Voting ends Thursday, September 8th. Senior voting opens up next week and voting for homecoming king and queen is on September 15th. Go to rockhill.votingforschools.com to cast your vote. Speaking of homecoming, Stuco is doing a lot to prepare for homecoming. We caught up with Stuco President Callie Romero to preview next week. It's so much fun and you just get to dress up every day and you get to like think about, oh, well, you have the dance or like you have whatever plans you have over the weekend. So it's just like all like that build up and it's just, I think it's really exciting. It's my favorite week. If you have any questions about what's going on about homecoming, check out Stuco's Instagram at BlueHawkStuco. At last Monday's school board meeting, Prosper ISD began the hiring process of an independent investigator. The focus of the investigation surrounds the arrest of bus driver Frank Panagua on charges of aggravated sexual assault of a child. Panagua has since passed away while in custody. Prosper ISD has given us a statement from the Board of Trustees regarding the topic. Quote, we understand and share the community's outrage over the allegations that former Prosper ISD employees sexually abused students. It is our understanding that Prosper ISD administrators took swift action upon receiving the complaint about the former employee and that these actions included communications with law enforcement officials, CPS, and parents in the district. Although we have confidence that Dr. Holly Ferguson and her team have handled this incident professionally and ethically, the board has retained an, an independent firm to investigate the matter. This investigation is ongoing, and we regret that in light of litigation on the matter, we, can, we cannot share more information about the investigation or allegations in the lawsuit. While the investigation is ongoing, Prosper ISD said they are, able to, they are unable to answer any questions about the topic. We also reached out to parents in the community, none of which would go on camera with us. As many of you may notice, over the past several years, the population of the town of Prosper has exploded. With that, it is no surprise that PISD is still the fastest growing school district in the state of Texas. Just since last September, Prosper ISD has gained over 3,300 students in Rock Hill, and Rock Hill enrollment alone has skyrocketed from just 2,500 when we ended school in May to having over 2,800 students today. This jump has led many campuses, including our own, to see much of more crowding than before. This issue should be resolved with the openings of Jones Middle School and Walnut Grove High School in 2024. Now we have a lot going on around campus this week, so here's a quick preview of what's going on around the hill. This past Thursday, we had our Decades Pep Rally for the Timber Creek game Friday night. Here's a quick recap of how that pep rally went down.
Our next pep rally will be the Homecoming Community Pep Rally next Wednesday, September 16th in the Rock Hill Arena after the parade. For more updates, make sure to keep up with our social medias at rockhill.media. Speaking of the football game this Friday, Bronwyn Liber is in studio to fill you in on last week's game and talk about everything else Rock Hill sports. Bronwyn? Thank you, Veronica. This past Friday, we saw history be made with our football team pulling a full 180 in outcomes in just a week, getting their first ever win at the 6A level as they faced off against Timber Creek. We caught up with Coach Wilkinson after his first win as Rock Hill's head coach. Uh, it, it was a great feeling. And, I, you know, people talk about first win as head coach. It's, it's really a team win. I'll, it's not about me. It's about our players. It's about our coaching staff. Like, I'm a very small piece of this. I mean, I'm, I'm the head coach, but those – those guys are the ones that do the work. So as much as I really appreciated all the love and thanks and congratulations for me getting my first win, like at the same time, I was always like, it's, it, it's, it's those guys. Some game highlights were watching Kevin Sperry with 10 to 17 carries, three rushing touchdowns and two interceptions. Next was Victor with 19 carries, 67 yards, one touchdown and two receptions. Finally, for our individual standouts, Keani had four receptions, 136 yards, and two touchdowns. The Blue Hawks managed to outgain Timber Creek 459 to 273. Their next game will be this Friday away at Plano East as their last non-district game. Next in sports, tennis had a rival match at Prosper against Prosper this past week. Unfortunately, the Blue Hawks came up short, losing 15 to 4 overall. They look to rebound as they have their next match tonight away at Allen against Allen. Volleyball had double action over this last week, with their first game facing off against Richardson, taking it all the way to the fifth set. The Blue Hawks managed to take home the win three to sets to two. We saw some great performances from senior Ellen Nolan with 14 kills and senior Julia Bursky with 31 digs. Unfortunately, moving into their next game, they didn't see the same results. They faced off against a tough Lake Highlands team at Lake Highlands and left losing zero sets to three. Their next game will be held tonight at home against Frisco at 6.30. Both boys and girls water polo had a game against Denton Ryan High School this past Wednesday. Boys came home with a win of 21-16 with Joel Peterson setting a new school record of 10 goals. Meanwhile, girls came home with a win of 28-3 with Bethany Sitz having 9 goals and Julie Kirkman having 7. Their next game is Wednesday at home against Braswell. With water polo's first year as a UIL sport underway, Connor Fuchsa looks into our aquatics coach and the effects adding another sport can have on a program. Coaching one sport is already a heavy task, but coaching three can be a big role to dive into. Coach Chip Peoples, a week before the school year started, found out he was moving up from assistant swim and dive coach to head of swim, dive, and water polo. Uh, it's kind of surreal because um, as, as any coach you want to be able to be a head coach and represent your school um, but for it to happen the week before school starts uh, there's a lot of work that needed to be done um, but it was exciting it, it's something I've dreamed about and to be able to do it at Rock Hill was something I didn't know that was going to be an option. With coach Kimmy Zimmerman stepping down people got the opportunity he was waiting for to become a head coach in only his third year of teaching. Already in the short time of him moving up, the team has grown a strong liking to the new coaching style. I think he's doing a really, really, really good job. Uh, he's like probably the best person to be like the head coach. So he's really like fluent in what he does. So having him as head coach has just really put things in a better, like better hands, I guess. It could not have been a more difficult year though to step into this role with water polo officially becoming a UIL sport and with our Blue Hawks moving up to the 6A level. It's been fun for us. And one of the big reasons is now having school funding, we've been able to give our kids uniforms and caps and things from the school um, that we now look like a real program at the 6A level. And so it's been a great experience for the kids and being able to adjust to the 6A level has been a challenge, but something we were ready for. Uh, we've been playing these teams over the last few years, so it's not new to them. It's just a different structure now with UIL. Coach Peoples and the water polo team have both come out to a strong start in their first year. They look to build on that by reaching their goal of winning a district title but they still have the storm of District 5-6A to get through on their path. For Hilltop News, I'm Connor Fuchsa. Coach Peoples has already made a strong impact on the culture of swim, dive, and water polo by rebranding the entire program to be aquatics. Make sure to go out and support any of our multiple sports teams that are playing tonight. Well, that's all for today's show. For Hilltop News, I'm Bronwyn Liber. I'm Kyle Lewis. And I'm Veronica Volchak. Keep rocking, Blue Hawks.